Hello everyone. In 2017, I made a compact adjustable power supply for personal use and used it until one of my persistent friends, who will definitely be watching this video, begged me for it. From me. Despite the fact that the power supply had rather modest specifications, it was indispensable for certain tasks, so about a month ago I decided to make a similar one for myself. If you ask me how many lab power supplies I have, I probably won't be able to answer. I have a ton of them, but each one is tailored for specific tasks, and none of them are superfluous. A power supply of such compact size is very convenient. It's great for some fieldwork and also quite handy for hobbyists with limited workspace. The main advantages are very low cost and high repeatability, as the unit is entirely assembled from ready-made Chinese modules. The cost of all components does not exceed $10. To be honest, you can't really call it a full-fledged lab power supply, since the stabilizer module used in this unit isn't top-notch, but even such units have a right to exist. I have two main laboratory power supplies. One is a budget Chinese model, which is on my workbench where I do my soldering, and the other is a programmable power supply IPS405 from RS, which I've been using for about three months and am very satisfied with. It is a professional, single-channel programmable power supply with 40 volts and 5 amps, featuring a large functional display and very cool digital controls. It has extended functionality and high-quality output voltage. You can find the link to it, as well as to other professional power supplies, on the official RS Company website via the link in the description. And if you're interested in how this unit works and how it's structured overall, I've made a separate video on this topic on my second channel. You can also find the link in the description. Well, now let's look at the main features of this little guy. The output voltage adjustment range is somewhere from 1 to 24 volts. The current adjustment range is literally from 0 to 1 amp. At a voltage up to 6 volts, you can draw a current of up to 3 amps from the power supply. However, this is only for a short period. The output voltage ripple at a current of 1 amp is about 120 to 150 millivolts, and that's a lot. Therefore, it can't be called a full-fledged lab power supply. For example, the IPS405 at the same current of 1 amp has voltage ripple of less than 5 MV. Although it's silly, to compare a unit made from cheap modules with a professional power supply, which costs about 30 times more, than the homemade one. And it's also worth noting that the IPS405 despite being a switching power supply, has fully linear control. But let's return to our power supply. The block diagram is now in front of you. It's important to note that this is a stabilized power supply for both voltage and current. That is, the set values of current and voltage will not change depending on the load and network voltage instability. Naturally, the unit is not afraid of short circuits, the current limit, will simply activate. With its help, you can easily charge batteries of any type with stable current and voltage. The power supply has LED indicators for operating modes and a digital voltamp meter. The case was printed on a 3D printer. You will find the link to the model for printing in the description. The internals consist of two units. These are a network switching, step-down power supply and a stabilizer board based on the XL4015 chip. Such a board is designed for a maximum current of 5 A. Uh, however, in this case, it needs to be cool. In our case, only 1A current is required, so it doesn't even heat up during operation. On the stabilizer board, there are two multi-turn trimmer resistors of 10 comb each for adjusting current and voltage. They were replaced with regular variable resistors of the corresponding resistance. The same goes for the SMD LEDs. I replaced them with regular 5mm LEDs and brought them out to the front panel. However, the board itself was not modified. Power Source Some time ago, I purchased several low-power power supply units with different output characteristics from AliExpress for various projects. These units are used, but they are assembled very competently and have high reliability. In our case, a 24-volt power source. With an output current of 1 amp was used, but actual measurements showed that it is capable of more. The power source is very compact, but despite this, it has a power of about 24 watts. 
At maximum power, it heats up, but the heating is stable and stays within limits. The source has fast protection against short circuits and a decent network filter. And the output voltage is, of course, stabilized. Voltameter. The most, ordinary one. Designed for a maximum current of 10A. Voltameters of this type can differ from each other primarily in the connection scheme and the speed of reading updates. My version is quite slow. For laboratory power supplies, I recommend choosing voltameters with an update speed of around 100 to 150 milliseconds or less. This means that the data on the display will update 10 times per second and there won't be a lagging effect on the indicator. Unlike in my case. All the wires used in this power supply are not quite ordinary. These are flexible multi-strand wires in heat-resistant silicone insulation as some parts of a unit may heat up and the wires are scattered randomly throughout the case. The insides of the power supply don't look very presentable, but fitting all of this into such a small case and ensuring it looks nice is almost impossible. The case has ventilation holes for natural air cooling. Considering the low power of the power supply, as well as the fully switched mode components with high efficiency, there are no issues with excessive heating of certain parts. It's clear that the assembled power supply is not intended for long-term operation under heavy load. I repeat, it is more suitable for field work. So, charging batteries of small capacity, repairing mobile phones and other portable equipment is no problem. Everything necessary for these purposes is available here. Friends, in the description below this video, you will find links to all the components for assembling similar power supplies, as well as links to all my laboratory equipment. If you have any questions related to electronics, you can always reach out to our group. The link is also in the description. Don't forget to rate this video and share it with friends if you found it helpful. With that, I have to say goodbye. And as always, this was Kasyanaka with you, and until next time. Bye.